Welcome everybody. This is Dr. Anwar Jan Khan from the Department of Anesthesiology. Today we'll discuss about some basic points of anesthesiology. Once again, good morning. So anesthesia could be defined as it is a state of controlled temporary loss of sensation or awareness with amnesia, that is loss of memory, adequate analgesia and muscle relaxation, which actually done purposefully. Here, not necessarily you have to say the definition like that. You have to know specific three things. This is a triad, you can say. Uh, amnesia, analgesia, and muscle relaxation. These three points are necessary for anesthesia. Now, we classify the anesth anesthesiology. Anesthesia could be classified into two general anesthesia and regional anesthesia. For you students, that is undergraduate students, classification of anesthesia, just as uh, I give the table like that, you can say under general anesthesia, you can say with intubation and another without intubation. I think you have seen in general anesthesia or uh, you followed the last class of where uh, you learned about general anesthesia where intubation could be given. And at the same time, without intubation, you can give general anesthesia. How? And the, you, you know about ketamine, I think, that you already told. Uh, this ketamine anesthesia would be given patients respiratory uh, muscles are not paralyzed and patient can take respiration. At the time, we can give nasal prong to give an, uh, oxygen supply or mask even. So another, uh, we can give some uh, propofol or thiopental sodium to the patient and the patient become unconscious. Here we can use mask, anesthesia mask. I, I, I shall uh, just show you at the end of the lecture. This ventilation could be used for mask ventilation. Another device, LMA, probably you have seen in the operation theater. I shall also uh, give you the picture uh, later on. This LMA, that is laryngeal mask airway. This is a spoon shaped uh, tube actually. This tube, the one end is uh, spoon shape and this spoon area just cover the larynx. So, by this, we can uh, give anesthetic gases. This could be with or without muscle relaxation. So, this is about general anesthesia. Uh, now, uh, regional anesthesia. Regional anesthesia, actually, uh, mainly we are giving spinal anesthesia, you know, uh, ever you've seen uh, in Russian theaters, epidural anesthesia, oral anesthesia, and plexus block, like bracket plexus block, etc. Uh, nerve root block, even. And local area block or surface infiltration with local anesthetic drug. These are the divisions of regional anesthesia. 
now some thing about the anesthetic drug actually uh, about anesthetic drug uh, in details you uh, went through in the last class though i am saying once again uh, inhalational anesthetic agent and like isoflurane allothane and sevoflurane these are commonly used anesthetic gases it's inhalational anesthetic agent so, and other gases used are nitrous oxide for analgesia and oxygen for to maintain the situation another anesthetic drug actually iv anesthetic agent propofol hypochondral sodium ketamine hydrochloride etc muscle relaxation you know uh, depolarizing and non depolarizing depolarizing or saxamethanium and non depolarizing mercurium bromide etc etc you already got this in the last class anyway so total operative periods we can divide into three portion like pre operative par operative and post operative so pre operative period this could be uh, one or two days before the operation even few hours before the operation this is a pre operative period you know so preoperative period the anesthetist check the patient for assessment and pre medications the following steps we follow first problem identification risk assessment preoperative preparations and plan of anesthetic technique so first of all problem identific identification actually preoperative checkup is for to have information from the patient about his previous diseases or habits etc like cardiovascular maybe hypertension ischemia arrhythmia etc respiratory problems COPD, obstructive sleep apnea, or maybe smoker, the patient may be smoker. Neuromuscular, like raised ICP, uh, I, ICP, uh, yes, it is neuro, not neuromuscular, but raised ICP may be a problem. Uh, seizure activities, myasthenia gravis, etc. Endocrine, diabetes mellitus, thyroid disease, etc intestinal hepatitis important one is renal renal failure and hematologic some anemia coagulopathies other than this we could see whether the patient is elderly more elderly or uh, children or infants newborn like this uh, or the uh, patient uh, with pregnancy to follow this and you have to identify any problem they have that could create any harm of anesthesia or anesthesia and some medication for allergy or other uh, maybe patient taking some drugs you have to sort it out and prior anesthesia with complications that is Previously, you have got some anesthesia for any operation, whether there was any complication or not, like digital intubation or any other cardiac or problem like that. So, problem identification continue. So, this problem, uh, how we can identify? It is through taking history, physical examination. Physical examination, this is general examination and local examination, including airway assessment, laboratory investigations. 
these three way. So physical examination, uh, especially airway assessment, we have uh, some classification. Uh, you see, uh, class one, class two, class three, class four. This is malampedic classification. It's called uh, is a protocol for identifying difficult intubation. Now, on the right hand side, there's a figure, a picture. Mm, you see, first one. This is class one. Uh, you can vis uh, you can see soft palate, uvula, anterior and posterior pillar, tonsillar pillar. And, and the second one, uh, you can uh, see the soft palate, uvula, but tonsillar pillars are uh, not seen here. And class three, visually less the soft palate and the base of the uvula. Here, not the total uvula, just base of the uvula, you can see. Class four is more dangerous. Uh, soft palate is not visible at all, only the heart rate. So three and four are uh, too much difficult to perform intubation. One and two, one of course, easier uh, to provide intubation. Uh, hope there will be no problem even in class two also but three and four we have to be prepared to face some difficulties in integration so we can use another devices like fiber optic laryngoscope anyway it's not necessary for you you have to know this uh, Classification, uh, there is classification, malampedic classification for assessing the difficulties during intubation. Class one, class two, these are easier to give intubation. Now, laboratory investigations is we uh, have to do uh, CBC, ESR, hemoglobin percentage, uh, fasting nurse sugar, serum KT. These are the routine investigations, you know. This is the uh, course routine if the age is more than 40. X ray, you can do uh, urine analysis. And some investigations are uh, there. You can do if there is any complaint that is related to this investigation, like electrolytes, if there is history of vomiting, intake of diuretics. Or renal disorders like that. Other uh, tests for a different system could be done according to history and examination. Now, number two, we said uh, risk assessment. This risk assessment actually there is a uh, another table for classification. You know, ASA that is. American Society of Anesthesiologists give this uh, chart. There is grade one or class one, two, three, four, five, through six. It is not for the light patient, it is for harvesting some organs. And one and two, these are non, no risk patient actually. Uh, very minimum risk they have. And three and four have risk. And uh, in case of five, you have seen the morbid, uh, moribund patient not expected to survive 24 hours if operation not done even. So, uh, like a rupture in museum, aneurysm, so you have to consult with the patient uh, accordingly with this class. Your patient have so and so, and uh, so he, he have this and that risks for anesthesia. So, as a one and two, these patient patients we can give anesthesia more or less without complication. Now, preoperative preparations. We had also uh, anesthetic indications, surgical indications, and 
according to some coexisting disease you can uh, see also uh, so anesthetic indications like uh, anxiolytics or sedations may need it when jodiazepine we usually use uh, previous night of operation we can prescription anxiolytic if the patient is anxious very much surgical point of view and uh, surgeons may need antibiotic or some time they need uh, some prophylaxis against dvt at this patient so low dose heparin can be used coexisting a uh, coexisting disease that includes actually some medication patient may continuing uh, before surgery that should be continued after surgery also like beta blockers thyroxine steroid sometimes or somebody may take some inhaler or something so another important thing for, before operation it is fasting recommendations you see that is operation er age amra khali pete rakhi sadharonoto amra jani 6 6 hours amra rekhe rakhi to ekhane ektu clearly bola ache jemon for clear fluids you can take 2 hours before operation also and breast milk 4 hours infant formula 6 hours non human milks 6 hours and light meal you can take in that case also uh, fasting should be for 6 hours so now we'll discuss about regional anesthesia especially spinal and epidural anesthesia you already heard the name or you this. other regional anesthesia also we hold plexus block local infiltration etc so indication of spinal and epidural anesthesia lower abdominal inguinal urogenital rectal or lower extremity surgeries you know the name of those surgeries is done here and alternative to general anesthesia for certain risk patient especially difficult in airway uh, respiratory disease you see if patient uh, we identify the patient uh, general anesthesia is very much risky but by spinal or epidural anesthesia or any other um, regional anesthesia we can perform the operation then it better to avoid general anesthesia in the, those cases especially difficult tuition where i told uh, there is a device like fiber optic laryngoscope but it is not available but everywhere in this case respiratory disorders you know copd uh, severe cases uh, we can alternatively use this spinal epidural anesthesia this is regional. now contraindications first contraindication is patient refusal if the patient refuse refuses then uh, actually you cannot give uh, spinal anesthesia or epidural anesthesia. Every operation's consent should be given. Here also, this is a contraindication. And infection over the site. Judi jehane ami nidil push korbo that which is skin. Je level amra pora discuss korbo ta. She jaga judi kono boil. Carbuncle, pharyngeal, bacchondral, infectious disease, thake, and the foci thake. So, what we have to do is to take the foci to the other side. Like, 
CSA code. So, I'm a daughter of this company. So, coagulopathy and blood discretion. And severe hypovolema or shock. Severe hypovolema shock, you should not proceed for spinal anesthesia or epidural anesthesia because uh, spinal anesthesia itself causes hypotension or epidural also. Now, in case of increased ICP, increased ICP. Head injury or such other, other tumor, brain tumor, etc. And sepsis. Sepsis patient is so risky uh, as they have got low BP. Low BP is not allowed for visual anesthesia. Here for visual anesthesia, we use uh, bupivacaine, lignocaine, these drugs. There are many. Local anesthetic drugs, but in our country, we use this bupivacaine and lignocaine. You can see uh, for uh, spinal anesthesia, bupivacaine from 5% and lignocaine for infiltration or local anesthesia also. Uh, but, or, uh, I mean, uh, spinal also can be given by lignocaine, though it is avoidable, but it's 2%. Another shadow to bupivacaine 0.5% the hyperbaric solution sector. hyperbaric or spread na kore three, four, four, five level. Uh, to risk so patient position, sitting position, or lateral decubitus position, and duration of anesthesia. In case of spinal, two to three hours you can perform operation here, and also epidural uh, time duration is same. Uh, but uh, and there is a advantage. Uh, one advantage uh, in epidural that is, if we use epidural catheter. And you can uh, increase the time. The incremental dose we can give through the catheter, and that will uh, help us to keep anesthetized more and more time. These are the positions you see. Here you see the procedure, how it is given. Uh, or how could be given um, in the left figure on the left hand side more left there is vertebral body uh, and body and on the right side the vertebral spine inside you see the spinal cord is ended at the level of the first lumbar uh, shown first, first lumbar of course uh, and then there is sagging of the Arachnoid matter here, the CSF is easily approachable. So, the number three, four, or five, four, five space that is between three, four spine, we can approach. You see a needle pass to the subarachnoid area, and the injection could be given. Actually, for epidural, uh, same thing happened. You see a needle uh, already introduced through the skin, subcutaneous tissue. Then here you see more beautifully the spines are there on the right side, right hand side, and uh, over the spine there is supraspinous ligament, then interspinous ligament, then ligament and flava. And then it will pass to the ligament on flava. Then uh, a catheter is introduced. This catheter uh, is going upwards. You may think, why not? It's going downwards. Actually, a needle tear, a shamed dicta, it to bakano thake, 
একটু কার্ভ করা থাকে যাতে এই এই ক্যাথেটারকে ক্যাথেটারটাকে ডাইরেক্ট করা যায় নিজের ইচ্ছা মতো সো আমরা ওই বাঁকা মুখটা যে দিকে রাখব মিডিলের সেই দিকে যাবে ক্যাথেটারটা আমরা সর্বতই এই ওপেনিংটা উপরের দিকে রাখি যে কারণে ক্যাথেটারটা যখন ঢুকাই তখন এটা উপর দিকে চলে যায় উপর দিকে গেলে about 4 cm আমরা ট্রাভেল করি এদিকে তারপর নিডলটাকে সরাই নেই শুধু ক্যাথেটারটা থাকে সো কিপিং দা ক্যাথেটার ইন সিচু উই গিভ ব্রাস অ্যানাদার থিং দা এপিডুরাল কেসেস রিকোয়ারস মোর মোর ড্রাগস দেন স্পাইনাল অ্যানেসথেশিয়া নাও complication of spinal anesthesia or subarachnoid block on table complication hypotension and bradycardia severe hypotension hoy ebong eta ke amra iv fluid diye ebong ephedrine diye treat kori ephedrine to drug diye drug hocche ephedrine amra use korte tar age dekhte hobe fluid sufficiently take preload kora holo kina সেই জন্য ফ্লুইড দেওয়া থাকলে তাকে একটু দেওয়া যায় ইভেন টেবিল পজিশন অনেক সময় একটু চেঞ্জ করা লাগে একটু লেফটে টিল করে দিই বেশিটার কমপ্লিকেশন ব্রাডিকার্ডিয়া ব্রাডিকার্ডিয়া ট্রিটেড উইথ অ্যাট্রোপিন ডিলেট কমপ্লিকেশন পিডিপিএইচ দ্যাট ইজ পোস্ট ডুরাল পাঙ্কচার হেডেক ইস রেয়ার কমপ্লিকেশন বাট in the second or third period so in case of epidural anesthesia indication and contraindications same as spinal anesthesia additional indications are the post operative uh, pain management you, you see uh, if we keep the catheter in epidural anesthesia then we can use this catheter for 2 to 3 days to give some analgesic drugs the analgesic analgesia te je drug dewa hoy seta hocche anesthesia drug tai amra jokhon kom dose dei anesthesia ra tokhon analgesia hisebe kaj kore shei jonne amra ei catheter diye tokhon a calculated dose ache sei dose ta amra dose kori একটা নির্দিষ্ট সময় পর পর তাতে পেশেন্টের অ্যানালজিসিয়া ভালো হয় কমপ্লিকেশন সেম এস প্যানাল অ্যানেসথেশিয়া এক্সেপ্ট পিটিপিএইচ এখানে যেহেতু আমরা ডুরা পাঙ্কচার করব না সুতরাং পোস্ট ডুরাল পাঙ্কচার অ্যাটাক হওয়ার প্রশ্ন কেন আমরা যদি আবার ভুল করে কমপ্লিকেশন করে ফেলি দ্যাট ইজ পাঙ্কচার করে ফেলি ডুরা সেই ক্ষেত্রে হতে পারে সেটা कार्डिओरेस्पिरेटरी কার্ডিও রেসপিরেটরি অ্যারেস্ট হলে আমরা সিপিআর দিই বা সিপিআর প্রয়োজন পড়ে এই সিপিআর দেওয়ার জন্য যে প্রসেসটা সেটা হচ্ছে কি ইট ইনক্লুডস চেস কম্প্রেশনস এন্ড মাউথ টু মাউথ রেসকিউ ব্রিদিং আমরা জানো যে আমরা দুটো রেসকিউ ব্রেথ দেই সাথে 30 বার মেপে গুনে গুনে আমরা চেস কমপ্রেশন এইভাবে সার্কেলি ঘুরতে থাকে এটা পেশেন্ট যে ঘটনা পর্যন্ত তার মানে অনন্তকাল না অবশ্যই যে ওটা বলতে আধ ঘন্টা দেখার দেখার পরে যদি দেখি যে হয় না তখন আমরা অন্য যেতে করি বাই দিস টাইম আমরা জানো একটা প্রোটোকল যে সিপিআর যে বেসিক লাইফ সাপোর্টেড যে প্রোটোকল প্রথমেই ফোন করে হেল্প চাইতে হয় কারো কাছে হেল্প চাইতে হয় ফোন করে কোনো এসিএল এস আসার জন্য কল করতে হয় সেক্ষেত্রে আমরা সিপিআর এর পরে পেশেন্টকে পাঠিয়ে দেওয়ার ব্যবস্থা করি 
के ट्रीटमेंट कार्डियोरेस्पिरेटरी अरेस्ट इज कंफर्म बाय अन रेस्पोंसिवनेस एब्सेंस ऑफ डिटेक्टेबल पाल्स एपनिया और एगोनल रेस्पिरेशन ओ अन रेस्पोंसिवनेस जो भी था के अगर प्रथम ही तो सीपीआर की कोडी सीपीआर क्लास बिल्कुल तो मन निश्चिमोने आसे जे प्रथम ही हम लोग पेशेंट के पुलिस ने लोग क्या मना से भाई की हुई लोग एक एक कमेंट के सुबह एक टप्पे चाना कुछ ऐसे पड़े ऐसे तो हम लोग जो हमारे पीछे के डील करते आए तब पर हम लोग तब पर हम लोग पेशेंट के तर ऑन बैक ताकि शोएद दी शोएद दी तब ब्लड सर्फेस है तब पर हम लोग जस्ट कंप्रेशन रेस्क्यू कर दी माउथ पे कुछ चेक करें नहीं कोनो शॉकिंग आ सकी ना तो हम लोग कंटिन्यू करें सो ये कार्डियोरेस्पिरेटरी एस्टेट मैनेजमेंट पे एक्चुअली इंक्लूड हुआ है हम लोग बेसिक लाइफ सपोर्ट एंड एडवांस कार्डियक लाइफ सपोर्ट बेसिक लाइफ सपोर्ट दिस इज कॉल्ड सीपीआर सीपीआर स्टार्ट करो पर एक आगे जेटा पड़ गया पेट करो एसीएलएस आशा करते हैं एसीएलएस आशा करते हैं हॉस्पिटल के पास एक बार ट्रीटमेंट के लिए अपने हम लोग एक तो किसी इंस्ट्रूमेंट शो मुंदे देखे नहीं तो जस्ट एक लोग दिस इस लेरिंगोस्कोप यू नो इस हैंडल एंड लेट लेट्स सी जब भी डायरेक्ट लेरिंगोस्कोपी करा जाए इंटीवेशन करा � एरो ट्यूब टा एक्चुअली हमरा टंग फॉल बैक टा प्रीवेंट करे प्लस टंग बाइट इन केस ऑफ कंबाल्सिव प्रॉब्लम पेशेंट के कंबाल्सिव था कि ताके टंग फॉल बैक टा प्रीवेंट करो प्लस टंग बाइट टा प्रीवेंट करो रेस्पेशन इजी हो नाउ दिस इज एनेस्टिशिया मास्क It's called Megill's forcep. It is used during anesthesia. And this is the endotracheal tube. A balloon that is stained. This balloon is uh, inflated after intubation done. Uh, then the balloon is Inflated and before extubation, that will be inflated also. This balloon will retain and shield the laryngeal area. Uh, here is the laryngeal mask airway, what I told before. You see, uh, one end there is cone shaped area, and this area covers the larynx. And through this tube, we connect uh, the circuit and it is a non-invasive procedure uh, because uh, inside the larynx, no need of any introduction of any tube. This is the anesthetic circuit, and this is flow meter and vaporizer. This is then a part of anesthesia machine you have seen in our operation theater. These are the cylinders, one black and white, this is oxygen cylinder, and the blue cylinder is for nitrous oxide. Just you can explain like these things. Here, this is the ventilator, anesthetic ventilator. Uh, you see in the, dis in the display, uh, the display you see, you see the, um, there is uh, Ventilation, uh, ventilation setup that is VT, that is volume I can set, uh, that is volume up to 500, 600, whatever you uh, need, according to body weight and weight also. This is a multi purpose monitor. You see pulse, oximetry, and blood pressure. Even ECG, you can see. 
Thank you very much. This is for today. Once again, thanks and goodbye.